how the people are doing, so. The iPhone 13 Pro, I'd say it's pretty good for photography. It's not my favorite, but it's still pretty good. Now the X70 Pro Plus right here. Well, this one, it's, it's, it's kind of a specialist in photography. I think that's the best way to put it. And it's gonna be quite interesting to see exactly how well these two, which are essentially the top offerings from both these companies, just, it's gonna be a fun comparison to be honest. So we are gonna start off with a pretty simple image here. Basically, it's not very complex and obviously both are doing a really good job here. I'd say the color differences are present, but it's a very minor thing. So I'm just gonna call this one a tie. You can only see the difference because it's a side by side. But in this one, I think the difference in the warmth is quite obvious and the X70 is actually the natural one here, but the iPhone is compensating way too much for it. Now this is a tendency that we have seen before in numerous camera comparisons. You can check all of those out in the link in the description and well, we see it here as well. Now here's another thing about the iPhone. When there are very high dynamic range situations like these, the iPhone tends to either blow out the highlights a lot or crush shadows as you see here. It doesn't happen all the time. There are instances where it'll perform admirably well and produce images like the X70 Pro Plus right there. There's also pretty low saturation on the iPhone. The X70 is a bit more on the vibrant side, but I think it's actually much closer to how it naturally looked to my eyes. Well, since we're already talking about issues on the iPhone 13, well then this is something that's limited to the 13 Pro and Pro Max because we have macro mode for the first time ever on the iPhone 13 Pro. And what happens is in an effort from Apple to make everything as automated as it possibly can be, essentially we have run into a problem here. What happens is if I would have gotten any closer, like if I were to take an image as close as we can go on the X70 Pro Plus there, then the iPhone would have switched over to the ultra wide for a macro shot and there is no way to turn it off and honestly it's an annoying little issue because if we switch to macro mode you don't actually get the background blur that you see on the X70 there. But speaking of macro it's actually really good on the iPhone 13 Pro this time around because you can get very close to the subject. There are maybe a few phones out there that can get as close as the iPhone. The X70, although it's fine with macro, I mean, it produces a really nice shot, but it definitely cannot get as close. Now then, moving on to the ultra wide. Well, you know, I'm actually surprised that this time around, the iPhone is not overcompensating for the warmth in the image. I mean, it's definitely doing a little bit of that. You can see that it's trying to maintain more blue in the sky and a little bit of the warmth is being taken out of the road, but it's still producing a really nice image and a very natural looking one at that, especially with the greens right there. But this pretty damn harsh image, I think there's a very interesting thing that's going on here. Remember I talked about how the iPhone tends to blow out highlights or maybe sometimes crush shadows when it comes to high dynamic green situations like this one here. Now, the X70 is doing a near impeccable job if you think about it, because technically speaking, it has better shadow detail, it has better color in the shadows, and it's controlling the highlights more. Now, that's what you'd expect. But, you see, the iPhone is not controlling the highlights as much, and as a result, at least in this case, we're getting a really beautiful and smooth roll-off, and it looks very nice, instead of a bright spot that we see on the X70. And yes, technically speaking, that's how HDR processing works, but... You know, there's just something about having such a smooth roll off on the iPhone there. Now here's another shot with the main camera and I kept this one in here specifically because I want to show that yes, the iPhone might mess up sometimes, but there are many instances when it also gives us really accurate colors like here. You can see now it's not compensating for the warmth almost at all. It's got a really natural look and the colors just look really nice. I actually prefer the colors on the iPhone here compared to the X70. You don't hear me say that often now, do you? But that's just the case. And it also really shows that although popular belief is that the iPhones are really good with consistency and all that, it's not really true. White balance is definitely an issue on the iPhone and sometimes it works, other times as you saw previously, it does not. But then we can also use zoom on both of these phones. This is 2x on the X70 versus 3x on the iPhone. And well, both have really nice and very high quality sensors. So there's really nothing to complain about here. But moving on further though, we can go to 5x on the X70, which is also optical. And at that point, you do get better detail and less over sharpening in general compared to the iPhone. For obvious reasons, optical zoom is always the go-to choice when you want better and more realistic details. At 10x though, 
I think the lead in long range zoom for the X70 is pretty much solidified. You can see just how little artifacting and over sharpening is present, despite being more detailed on the X70 there. Well, here I was praising the iPhone for maintaining natural colors. You can see how different both these images look. They were taken at the very same time of the day and the image on the X70, the colors right there, that is exactly how it looked to my eyes. Uh, it's almost a perfect copy right there. The iPhone obviously looks very different. It's completely taking out all of the warmth from the image, which actually looked quite nice. And it's giving us a very different image. It, it almost looks like it was taken at a different time of day. But of course, there's also a high resolution image on the X70 Pro Plus coming in at 50 megapixels and zooming in, you know, it's not as good as I expected. Apparently, the iPhone actually produces more detail. I mean, it has a lot more over sharpening and a lot more haloing around the edges. It's especially visible on the building, but even so, it is giving us more detail, which is not expected from the iPhone. You'd expect that from the X70 because it's a 50 megapixel shot after all. I'm not sure why it's not processing the image properly here, but it's definitely something that Vivo might need to update. Thankfully though, on the ultra wide camera with 48 megapixels, you do get exceptional details. But before zooming in, you'll notice that the X70, contrary to many of the previous images, actually has worse dynamic range with more of the highlights being blown out. That is one of the trade-offs when you take a high resolution image. Unless you have nice and even lighting, I think it'd be best to stick to normal images on the X70. But zooming in, and this is how it was supposed to look on the main cameras. You see better detail, less noise, less artifacting and over sharpening and it just shows that there is reasonably better detail for the resolution on the X70 here. But that wasn't really the case for the main camera which is very surprising if you ask me. Now this backlit shot of Valentine right here, it's actually with a studio light of 100 watts. So it's, it's a very challenging situation quite obviously. And I took the shot because I remember the iPhone 12 struggling quite hard in these situations. It just could not handle all of that backlight. But in this case, the iPhone is actually doing a really good job. Clearly, the 13's processing has improved enough that these situations do not falter the iPhone anymore. The X70, as expected, is doing an impeccably good job and I do like the higher contrast on the X70. But this image in particular kind of shows you the major differences in processing when it comes to colors and contrast. And I know there are a lot of people who like the contrast and colors on the X70 and there might just be an equal number of people who like the flatter look on the iPhone there. So it's just gonna be up to you entirely to choose which look you prefer and what you exactly want from your cameras. Now portrait mode, well, I must say this is something I was waiting for because the X70 impressed me a lot with the S21 Ultra camera comparison that I did a little while ago. You can check it out from the link in the description. But in general, portrait mode was stellar in that comparison and it does not disappoint here as you can see. And there are two things I really want to point out here. Firstly, I'm using planar portraits on the X70. It's a preset you can use and it's one of the size portrait mode options you can get and this is the best option for me. I've tried out all of them and this is the one I've stuck to. It produces the best images with just impeccable contrast for my eyes and you know this is how I like my images. The iPhone is not doing a bad job but the color of my jeans in particular just looks way too desaturated right there on the iPhone. The X70 is actually doing a really good job with colors here. Now this one I must say it's a very challenging portrait for good reason. The sun is basically behind me and well the X70 is clearly doing a better job here. Not only is it maintaining proper contrast even in such a difficult situation compared to a much more flat and just not so appealing image on the iPhone, it's actually got much better skin tones here. Just take a look at how much more saturation is present in the shadows and you know, it just looks good. This is once again a planar portrait so yes, my recommendation would be to just select planar portraits and call today. You're gonna get insanely good results if you like the look. Here's another portrait shot and you know for the most part, once again, I do prefer the X70 because once again, if you look at the color of my jeans, that just looks ridiculous. It looks a completely different color for some reason on the iPhone while the X70 is producing the right blue color. And you know, the background also has some desaturation on the iPhone, but it's really bad for my jeans for some very odd reason. I don't know what it has against my pants. But anyways, basically, I prefer how the X70 looks with slightly more saturation in the skin tones and 
overall my preference this is again my personal choice for the X70 Pro Plus as my portrait camera in night mode portraits so I think this is going to be an interesting situation because you're just going to have to choose exactly what kind of night mode portraits you want. Essentially the iPhone goes for a slightly more muted look but one that looks more like nighttime compared to a brighter higher contrast and sometimes even more detailed results on the X70. But that's a trade-off you don't exactly get an image that might look entirely as if it was taken at night. In this case it's pretty obvious. Also, I do want to point out that the bouquet in the background, it just looks ridiculous on the X70 there. I mean, I like the fact that it really likes to bring out bouquet and give us that biochar swirl effect and all that jazz, but the bouquet on the ground, it just looks like the sparks flying off. It just, it looks really weird to be honest. So for portrait mode, if it wasn't clear already, my choice is the X70 Pro Plus, but for selfies, I think the iPhone does an overall better job because as you can see, it just gives a better balanced and much more accurate looking image. Essentially, you get a more pleasing contrast, you get slightly better skin tones and it just looks better. Now this selfie here, very difficult shot to say the least and it's essentially the opposite of the results that we saw in the portrait mode right there. But yeah, it goes to show that clearly the iPhone does a much better job with selfies compared to portraits. And obviously compared to the X70 as well, I mean, it just looks completely flat compared to really nice and punchy contrast on the iPhone here. Now here's a selfie portrait and yeah, I once again think the iPhone is doing a better job. Not only does it have less of that overexposed look, it has better blacks and it also has better skin tones. Also, we can adjust the background blur, the amount that is, after taking the image, but we cannot do that for selfie portraits on the X70. You can use that for rear camera portraits, but not for selfie portraits. It's just a weird limitation. Now, I think this portrait mode, it kind of solidifies the fact that the X70 is not particularly great with selfies and selfie portraits. I mean, it's kind of a bummer because normal rear portraits, they are ridiculously good on the X70. I think this is also one of those areas that could really use some improvements via software updates. Now, selfie night mode, it's... It's pretty rough on both of these phones. Well, technically speaking, I look like polished ceramic on the X70 versus, you know, noisy and grainy on the iPhone. So yeah, clear conclusion is that neither of these phones have particularly good selfie night mode, even though they have the feature. You don't really get particularly nice and usable images here. Moving on to normal night mode shots though, and the reason I kept this image in the comparison at all is because of the colors. I mean, we have similar levels of details from the main cameras on both, and the noise levels are also basically the same, but the colors look so much better on the iPhone here. Yeah. I'm surprised that the X70 is inaccurate. It's, it's usually not the case, but you know, this, this really goes back to the fact that the iPhone can be quite inconsistent when it comes to colors. Ultra wide night mode, however, that is just straight up not good on the iPhone 13 Pro. It's quite disappointing because we've had a hardware update, we have a newer larger sensor for the ultra wide camera, but clearly the processing is not properly utilizing it or just it's just straight up not working properly here. Because on the other hand, the X70 Pro Plus, it does have a better sensor for the ultra wide camera, but even so, it just took a one second exposure compared to two seconds on the iPhone and still manages to produce a monumentally better image. Here's another ultra wide and this time the differences are not as drastic as the one before, but still, you know, we get better shadow detail, we get better normal details with the leaves and less noise around the leaves so yeah in general the x70 is doing a much better job here and in case you thought that this was a big difference well then just wait around and see until we get to ultra low light situations but before that we have a close-up shot here this is more to test like how well focusing works at night and just how well these images would turn out and it, it really goes to show that the main camera night mode is really good on the iphone 13 pro it is probably one of the best right now I would say it is almost as good as the X70, although in lower light, I think it's better on the X70. But yeah, for the most part, the main camera is really good. But the ultra wide suffers a lot at night for some very odd reason. It's definitely the processing that Apple really needs to improve here. But then for zoomed in night mode, I think the X70 actually does a slightly better job with the 2x telephoto zoom lens compared to the 3x zoom that we can use here because I do see more artifacting and just noise in general on the iPhone compared to the X70 here. Now, technically speaking, you could take 5x optical zoomed in night mode on the X70, but 
I'd recommend not doing that because of the fact that the X70's 5x zoom camera is just not high quality enough to take proper night mode shots so all you're getting is a cropped in image and that clearly does not look good. Tell you what though, if you want to crop in, crop into the moon because this is a 30x zoom shot that you're looking at and the next one is 60x zoom. But somehow with some ridiculously good software processing, the X70 is able to produce such immaculately beautiful results. I mean, this is about as good as you can get from the S21 Ultra, which as you might remember has 10 times optical zoom, double of the X70 and a much better sensor that too. So you know, that kind of goes to show how big a role software processing can play, especially in shots like these. Now moving on indoors, well, this shot isn't exactly a very challenging one and for the most part it's very similar there's only the obvious difference in colors the x70 is more vibrant and the iphone 13 has a slightly more desaturated look but then of course we've got night mode styles and if you've been following this channel i'm pretty sure you saw this coming didn't you essentially i am hooked to this incredible camera feature and i just can't let go i believe that this is the best smartphone camera feature software wise that we can get on any smartphone so far honestly nothing comes close at least in my opinion that is because essentially what you're getting here is night mode along with some color presets that can give you some of the most clean and stylized images because you're getting the amazing image from night mode and then you're getting these crazy presets that just look incredible to say the very least. Now moving on we have ultra low light this time with the main cameras and as I said before the iPhone 13 Pro has really good main camera night mode. We can get really nice clean images as you can see but of course there's the fact that it is blowing out a lot more highlights and crushing quite a few of the shadows compared to the X70 which is why I think the X70 pulls ahead with ultra low light situations because of just how bright and controlled the images can be but then ultra low light with the ultra wide camera yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that the X70 is doing a far far better job and it's actually taking just a two second exposure to make this thing happen compared to five freaking seconds on the iPhone and even with five seconds it could not expose the upper half of the image at all and of course there's way more noise and a severe lack of details compared to the X70 as well so in general the X70 is definitely much better when it comes to ultra wide low light situations and so that is a wrap for our camera comparison and well Apple seriously needs to improve the processing for ultra wide night mode I mean that's essentially my biggest complaint for the iPhone 13 Pro in general you know selfies are definitely the major area where the x70 was lacking so yeah i think my pick is gonna be the x70 pro plus but do keep in mind a lot of this is based on personal preference i mean portrait mode is entirely based on personal preference to be honest but yeah do let me know which of these you prefer in the comments and of course if you enjoy this stuff hit that like button and of course subscribe for more i'll be seeing you guys later cheers